Hello and welcome to the May 2023 Restoration Advisory Board public meeting. My name is Jesse Howard and I will be facilitating this evening. This meeting will be documented and live streamed by Irving Entertainment Studios as well as recorded by certified court reporter Ms. Suzanne Stiles. Uh, before we would begin, I would like to ask if we have any state or local government officials with us tonight that would like to introduce themselves. Any items, it's strictly in observation mode. Uh, so it's much it. Okay. Bill Palmer, Osco to Township Supervisor. Hi. Robert Tazier, I am a Osco to Township Trustee. Joshua Sutton, Osco to Township Clerk. Amy, did we have anybody virtually who'd like to introduce themselves? Megan Berry with EGLE, Celeste Holtz with BB&E, and there are a number of people just signed in as guests um, that I can't see the organization. Okay, lovely. Uh, we do have a pretty full agenda tonight, so I will ask the co-chairs for their opening remarks. Mr. Willis? So for the RAB members, just real quick, these mics are pretty directional, so you will need to speak right into that end round piece and keep it as close to your mouth as, as you can so we can hear you, just in general. We can do shadow puppets in front of the screen while we wait.
right. Ready to go? Okay. <clears throat> Again, welcome everyone. I see we've got a good good turnout tonight. It's good to see uh, people continue to show up for these, and there's an interest in the community and all the environmental work that the Air Force is doing at Wordsmith. <clears throat> we do have, as, as Jesse said, we do have a full agenda tonight. Uh, one of the things that will be a little different is that we are uh, going through the uh, nomination process for filling three vacant RAB positions. Uh, we'll get to that a little bit later this evening, but that'll be something that'll be new, new kind of in our meeting agenda. That's all I've got. Um, Mark Henry, the community co-chair. I would like to welcome you also to this meeting, and I would encourage everyone to ask questions. If there are things that you don't understand related to the posters or the presentation material, by all means, speak up and uh, ask your questions. Okay, I will go ahead and take attendance now. I'll start with the community rap. Uh, Mark Henry, our community co-chair. Sure. Arnie Larich. Present. Scott Lingo. Present. Rex Vaughn. Present. Kathy Wurstabarth. Bill Gaines. Present. David Wynn. Present. And Greg Schultz. Present. All right. And the government RAB members, uh, Stephen Willis of the Air Force Civil Engineer Center, our government co-chair. Present. Tim Cummings from Oscoda Township. Present. Eric Strayer, Oscoda Township. Present. I have Beth Place and Amy Hadley, both from Eagle. Present. Present. Punit Vidge from the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, Jesse Stuntebeck of the USDA Forest Service. Okay. Um, Michael Munson from OWA. Here. And Denise Bryan from District Health Number Two. Present. All right. Next, I would like to review the ground rules for tonight's meeting. Number one, respect one another and maintain an atmosphere of open dialogue and exchange of ideas. Number two, use our time together efficiently, wisely, and respectfully. Number three, speak clearly, one person at a time, avoiding interrupting others. Number four, listen and, main, and remain open to different points of view. Number five, maintain a propensity for progress, prepare, discuss, document, and move forward. Number six, share information early, openly, and honestly. And number seven, accurately and objectively relate to others the discussions that occur at board meetings. And quickly, I will review our virtual participation checklist. Um, if you prefer to join by phone, please dial the call-in number and enter the access code for the meeting. Star 5 will raise or lower your hand. Uh, the RAB coordinator will enable your mic, and star 6 will unmute you when it's your turn to speak. If we could please have um, anybody participating online mute themselves when they're not speaking. Use the raise hand to raise your hand. The RAB coordinator will enable your mic and you can unmute yourself when it's your turn to speak. To enable closed captions for language support, click more, language and speech, turn on live captions. Please use the chat for any questions and contact the RAB coordinator with any additional questions that you may have. It is amy.rouser at wsp. That is A-M-Y dot R-A-U-S-E-R at W-S-P dot com. And tonight's agenda, let's see. We are doing welcome introductions and ground rules now. After will be the RAB member updates. Following, followed by the RAB business update. We'll get the BICOS update, followed by the RI update, the IRA update. We'll review our schedule. We'll address any RAB member questions, followed by public comment, and then the conclusion of tonight's meeting. And lastly, we do request that all community members hold their comments until the end of the meeting and that portion of the agenda. Uh, Mr. Willis, would you please begin with an update from the Air Force? 
Sure, so since our last RAB, RAB meeting, uh, and at the request of the, during the last RAB meeting, we did have a virtual technical session on April 24th to discuss the PFAS risk assessment. Uh, there were a few action items generated from that virtual session, and we are working on the responses to those. Uh, one of those dealt with the, how we were, what data was available from previous investigations by uh, Eagle or the Health Department or uh, Department of Natural Resources, and so we're evaluating, compiling all that data, and uh, we'll put together a table of, of what what data can and can't be used uh, as part of the RI, PFAS RI risk assessment. So we'll make that table available to everyone so they understand what data is out there and what data we're able to use. Um, we did host another technical session, an in-person technical session yesterday. Uh, I did solicit from the community RAB members uh, topics that they'd like to discuss. We got roughly a dozen or so um, questions and comments, and so we prepared a handout for that. We unfortunately had a few technical difficulties with the handout, and so it wasn't available yesterday. Um, but I will make that available. We'll post it on the RAB site, website, and we'll also uh, put a copy in the information repository in the library. Uh, it turns out that though we had quite a few questions, I don't think we got past question one or two. <laughs> we got sidetracked on numerous discussions. They were all very product productive. Um, but didn't necessarily stick with our agenda, but that's okay. We'll make the, the handout available uh, that'll address the questions that were submitted, and if there's follow-up discussion on those needed, we'll do that. We had talked about uh, if there is follow-up discussion needed, rather than having um, an in-person meeting, we might be able to do that virtually so that we can cover all of the issues that were uh, supposed to be discussed. Kathy? There was no slideshow, right? What, when you say handout, what was the handout you're referring to? That's correct. The, the, the handout is all the questions that were submitted along with a written response, a narrative with the response on it, whether it was you know, action that's been done, action that's going to be done, uh, whether no action's required and the justification for that, along with supporting maps, uh, aerial images. Uh, there's a, some... Um, blueprints of buildings that identify where PFAS, the, the AFFF storage tanks were located in a building. Much of the information that was shown yesterday will be uh, in that handout as well. <clears throat> so Steve, is there a, a, a time frame in which you'd like to see us submit questions like this in advance of a technical meeting so that we could get answers before the meeting? Um, we'll have to work on that did stuff um, from Mark, and I think it was a little slow getting input, but we did get input and got responses as quickly as we could, but we can work on the timing between Mark and I. Okay, and, and while we're talking about the RAB website, um, in terms of handouts, uh, for, the, for the, the presentation that you provide for this meeting, you know, for the RAB website, I know that you keep that on there you know, once the meeting's done, you load the video and the pr presentation and all of that. If you could provide this handout on the RAB website in advance of the meeting when you release it to all of us, like yesterday you released it, right? If you could put it on the website, that will help people at home that are wanting to look at the slides in advance and looking, you know, just look at them longer. That, that would be appreciated so that the public can have access to these slides that we are all looking at during the meeting. Okay, I'll look into that. Our public affairs office actually maintains and uploads all that stuff, so I'll work with them to see Thank you. how we can get that available sooner. All right, Mr. Henry, did you have an update for us? Did you have an update for us? I'm sorry? An update for the RAB? Um, the uh, community RAB hasn't done a whole heck of a lot. Uh, we've had a couple of internal meetings. We have um, uh, had a pretty good turnout at the technical meeting that happened yesterday. And we've had some internal discussions uh, about topics to raise to the Air Force. But outside of that, there hasn't been too much going on. OK. Anybody else from the community RAB have an update they would like to share with us? 
Kathy? Yes. All right, so I, I kind of disagree with Mark that the community RAD members haven't done much because we have done a lot, I gotta say. Maybe not <laughs> all together <laughs> as one big group, but individually we are working very hard, so. Uh, um, regarding the IRAs, the four IRAs that were requested, um, actually in uh, August 17th of 2022 uh, by RAD member uh, Dave Wynn, I'd like to just give um, everybody a timeline and how those those had worked in terms of our requ our request um, as a RAB for the consideration for those IRAs. So on uh, August 17th of 2022, we requested that these uh, four four IRAs for um, landfill 3031, three pipes drain, wastewater lagoon and the DRMO area uh, be considered. And then in November 16th, we had a, another RAB meeting and we were provided slides that said that the, uh, the landfill 3031 and the DRMRO area do not warrant an interim remedial action. So at that point, a few of us um, in the community created an effort to request support from legislators and the state in terms of getting um, the su support for these IRAs, which we feel are very, very important for our community to stop the flow of PFAS off of the base. This is the point of these interim remedial actions to keep the PFAS from flowing off the base, to maintain it on within the boundaries of the base and start, stop harming hu humans. So February um, 9th, we, or in mid-February, we um, submitted some requests. And on um, February 15th, the state of Michigan, Eagle, said that they, they also support and believe that these IRAs are important for the community to, to protect them. Um, which um, we really appreciate working with the state in terms of you know knowing what's important in the community. Then on March 1st, we reached out to the county commissioners, Iasco County commissioners, and they they issued a letter of support for these actions also. And on March 27th, the U.S. Air Force submitted a, a letter to Eagle saying that. Uh, they are basically going to do more, trying to collect more data for these interim remedial actions. We believe, strongly believe, that no more data needs to be collected, that the data exists, and they should use that data. <clears throat> and then, um, and, it, and that is what the letter reflects. And if, according to, you know, some uh, representatives for the Air Force, there's, they said that the letter doesn't say, no, we aren't going to be conducting those interim remedial actions. It just says we're going to look at, look at it long, uh, longer, excuse me, <laughs> continue to look at that. And um, you'll have to forgive us, but we don't necessarily trust the Air Force that this is going to be done in a timely manner if you can't say yes right now, because it needs to be done now. And then lastly, we received a letter of support from Oscoda Township on April 24th again, indicating that they believe that our community needs to be protected with these interim remedial actions. And I have those copies for the Air Force if they have not received those. And, um, you know, I would really, I think that we need to um, stop the train and look at these immediately. These need to be done now, and our experts have indicated that, and the data shows that there is harm to humans and the environment. Thank you. Would any other community members like to give us an update? Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Arnie LaRich. A uh, couple things that some of us have been working on, uh, and I'm just going to give a highlight of it in this update, and then later on uh, we'll talk about it. I'll talk about some of it. Because uh, both of them will, I hope, and I'm going to submit uh, as action items. One of them is a surface water foam. This was brought up in August of 2017 in our first orientation because it was only three months prior 
that the DEQ at the time, with the aid of a STEM high school class, found out that the foam, when once sampled and analyzed, was very high in PFOS. And then the Air Force took a sample a couple weeks later, and they found 100,000 parts per trillion, and the state has found upwards of 97,000 parts per trillion in the foam. And that's mostly on Van Etten Lake. That we were promised to have an expert, a subject matter expert from the Air Force come and meet with us at the second orientation meeting, which was in September, a month later. We did not see that person show up, and we were told that he was not uh, coming. Since then, some studies have been done by the DOD. However, those, that information has not been accepted by the subject matter experts in the remedial investigation work plan. And therefore, I'm going to suggest that those articles, and the most recent one just was published last month, two months, I mean, uh, two years, three years actually, since the sampling. The second one relates to the uh, risk assessments. Because no one uh, in the Air Force so far or their consultants have recognized the foam as anything to be done, anything more than what the health department of the state has said, and that is do not touch it. And if you do come in contact with the foam on the lake, wash it off. And that's it. You can read that in the risk assessment. There's no more investigation going to happen. That cannot stand. The second thing re regards the ecological sampling and analysis of fish, wildlife, deer, and so forth. In 2018, I gave a report at another site where the, uh, the Air Force sampled for screening purposes and not wait five years later to wait for the remedial investigation um, work plan. They did the sampling in 2018, but our, the team here said, no, it doesn't happen. They don't do it until, they don't do the sampling until the RI. And that's five or six years afterwards. Well, that's not what other sites do. There's an old saying that says, you can't know what you don't know unless you ask. And the ask really is do screening analysis. And that's how you find out if there's anything possibly out there that you should investigate. And I'll just end with that, and I hope there's some answers in the discussion later on. Anybody else from the community, or community rab member, I mean, with an update? Right. How about any government rab num members with an update for us? I just want to make a point here as well to say that the uh, Skoda Township Board, of which I'm a trustee, did pass a resolution that uh, Ms. Wisterbarth did mention, and it does support the need for these four IRAs to be prioritized by the Air Force. It is important that we, we can no longer prevent the flowing of PFAS off of the base. We now have to stop what is already flowing. And it harkens me back to a comment that I made at an Air Force meeting on the base back at the end of 2016 with uh, predecessors of yours, uh, Steve, when I said that the, that the imposition of CERCLA may actually serve the Air Force, but it is moving at such a slow pace that Mother Nature is going to outpace you. 
And at that early time, we didn't know that the PFAS had actually exceeded the property boundaries of the Air Force Base. And I commented, by the time you get done, it will be off the base. And within a year, that's what happened. I'm no prophet, but it is a serious problem that it stuns me with all the experts involved that we don't have that insight and that as a lay person, I could spot that. End of comment. Beth had an update for us as well. So Beth plays for Eagle. Um, I wanted to introduce um, Amy Hanley. Amy Hanley will be uh, taking over for me as project manager on currently on the PFAS and the long-term monitoring portions of Wurtsmith. And at the next RAB, she'll, she'll be filling my seat on the RAB as well. Yes, good evening, everybody. I'll just give information background on me. Um, I've spent the last five years in different areas of the state government doing public and environmental health. Um, and specifically, the last two years, I've been working in the CERCLA process over at Camp Grayling. Um, so I'm here to help this team move forward in the process. Thank you. Uh, our other updates for EGLE include um, recently we were able to, with the assistance of uh, DNR, um, get the data in a shareable format, and we shared that with um, Steve Willis and his team um, earlier this week. So all the wildlife uh, um, sample collection data from the Purdue study was shared with the Air Force team. Um, my understanding from DNR is that likely next week or the week after, there'll be a, re a report available on the MPART website where um, the public will be able to access this information as well. Also, we have been coordinating with Air Force and DNR and our Water Resources Division in order to um, um, help forward as much as we can in advance the pilot study at Three Pipes Drain. So we're working on um, issues that would normally be um, the requirements of of permits. So we're still working through that with uh, DNR, Water Resources, and um, Air Force, but we don't see any um, significant delays or any delays. <laughs> um, the next item I wanted to talk about was we do have a few concerns um, recently with the Air Force work. And so one of the concerns is with the PFAS RI. We don't We've noticed that there was a gap in field work here um, from April 23rd, and that Air Force is not beginning field work again until the early part of June. Um, we have concern that'll cause delays in the PFAS RI. And also, we have another concern with the aircraft alert area in our remedial action. Um, Air Force does not want to participate in our substantive requirements process. And so that's the process that's in place in lieu of um, the federal government getting a permit within the state. Um, our Water Resources Division um, has a substantive requirements process. So we make sure that they meet all the, all the reporting requirements and, um, and follow state law through this process. And Air Force has declined to participate that, in that. Air Force in the past participated in this with um, the FTO2 interim remedial action, as well as the central treatment system interim remedial action. I believe Mission Street as well is also covered under a substantive requirements document, an SRD. And um, so we just wanted to mention that um, we have significant concerns with that. One of the conditions that RRD Remediation Redu Redevelopment Division and Water Resources Division at Eagle we provided concurrence with the groundwater infiltration gallery for this interim remedial action based on that a substantive requirements document would be issued and negotiated. So right now we're concerned that this will cause a delay in the process. Thank you. Sir, did you have an update for us from the government? I apologize. 
apologize for not being here last month or last uh, last meeting, but I was having knee replacement. The name will change in the future to Steve Austin, the six million dollar man. Um, I've got basically seven bullet points that I'll share with you, and after the meeting, if you want more information, I can I can share them with you. But for 2023, the airport is making substantial improvements from a uh, uh, visual and a business standpoint. Um, we are uh, we have or we have now completed uh, removing some um, stored material on the inner ramp. Uh, and making that ramp available now for uh, new client expansion. Uh, we're working with Cleta Air to move their storage area, uh, their, their, their storage material from the uh, taxiways they currently have to the alert area. Uh, it'll be much uh, easier for them to work a much larger area and it'll improve the overall um, looks of the airport. Uh, we're also going to uh, rehab those existing ramps uh, and to bring them back into taxi service. We uh, are in the process of um, uh, reconditioning taxiway alpha. That's with FAA funds. That'll start in the next month or so. Uh, we're reconditioning the spalling concrete in the general aviation area. Uh, big improvement in that area. We are in the process of replacing some of the deteriorated service gates as well as installing some new ones where needed. And last but not least, we're removing some of the natural growth from the fencing area and in the airway areas uh, because of, of, of obstructions. Thank you. All right, did we have any additional updates from any of the government RAB members? My name is Puneet Vich, I'm from MDHHS, so I have a couple of updates. Um, so MDHHS is planning uh, another round of free sampling, which is going to start uh, in July of this year. And regarding exposure assessment, our clinics are going on and appointments are being scheduled. All the details are available on the website, uh, on DEH bio page. Um, also, MDHHS held exposure specific, uh, exposure assessment specific meetings virtually on May 2nd and in person on May 4th. Thank you. Anybody else from the government side of the RAB? Okay. I think that now we will move on to the RAB business portion of tonight's agenda and Mr. Willis is going to help us with the election. So as, as I mentioned early on in the meeting, we do have three vacancies in the community uh, RAB member uh, portion of the RAB, and so we are going to do a nomination process for, for filling those vacancies. We do have three candidates that uh, have submitted applications for that, so each of the candidates will have three minutes to provide uh, some information on their background and um, why they think they would be a good fit for joining the RAB. So we'll just run down the list. We'll start with uh, Mr. Kyle Jones. If you want to step up to the microphone, which disappeared. <laughs> Here we go, it's coming. Uh, my name is uh, Kyle Jones. I am, uh, I've, I've had connections to the community uh, for approximately 55 years, starting as a little boy. Um, and we've been coming up to Oscoda uh, to vacation throughout the summer. Um, and uh, my parents had a, a cabin um, just a bit north of town here. And uh, now my wife and I own a uh, larger um, dwelling uh, also on Lake Huron. Um, it, technically, it's in Greenbush. Uh, we always say Oscoda anyway. <laughs> um, about myself, um, I am uh, a, a 1983 graduate of the University of Michigan uh, with an undergraduate degree in chemical engineering. I worked as a chemical engineer for five years and then uh, entered law school. Uh, and, and in 1990, I started my legal career and has been an environmental lawyer um, since then. I recently retired um, after leading the 
uh, environmental law section of the Office of the General Counsel at Chrysler, or Fiat Chrysler, um, uh, given the merger uh, between Chrysler and Fiat in 19, or, sorry, 2009. Uh, so the combination of uh, my uh, connection to the community, uh, my real love for the area and its environs, um, and my specific uh, scientific and legal uh, whatever skills I have, I believe would uh, really um, allow me to um, be a liaison between uh, the Air Force and any other environmental professionals that are working with authority on the, on the case and the community. And as well, um, I would be in uh, taking on a role of advocating for the community uh, to get things done uh, in the right way pursuant to law. Uh, and so um, I'll stop there and entertain any questions if anybody has them. Uh, otherwise, um, uh, I think I've provided, Steve, what you asked me to provide. So Thank you. OK, any questions? Yeah, at this point, we won't go into a question and answer with each of the candidates. You'll have your okay. three minutes, and then and then we'll move All to right, the next very person. Well. So yeah. thank you. So next we have uh, Josh Sutton. All right. Joshua Sutton, introduced as Oscoda Township Clerk tonight. Interested in this as a citizen, lifelong part of our community. I'm raising my children, um, purchased my home, first home on the Air Force Base, which is in that contaminated area. Enjoy taking my kids to three pipes, swimming along the river, canoeing, huge sportsmen. So this is a huge concern for me. And I've served with a lot of you and a lot of other capacities in our community for other purposes and look forward to joining you and ensuring that we keep this pristine place that we have over here that just doesn't compare to anybody else in Michigan. That's all I have. Thank you, Josh. And the last person is uh, Dave Carmona. I don't, oh, there he is. Okay, great. <laughs> C-A-R-M-O-N-A. -A. Dave Carmona. New resident here, moved here November of last year, uh, got involved with the RAB, and now um, I have been coming to this area since the late 1980s when my in-laws bought property on the Big Lake, and they live there now. Um, so I've always had a love for this area and decided to settle here after my retirement. Um, as for myself, um, I first got interested in the environment and how we as humans interact with it. On the first Earth Day, when as a Boy Scout over at Camp Rotary in the Fort Scott area, we planted like 30,000 trees over a weekend as part of the first Earth Day. And to go back two years ago and see them now 50 to 75 feet tall and ready for harvest is pretty amazing testament to what we as humans can do in the environment. Uh, in college, uh, education and music major, but my education portion included a minor in natural sciences. Uh, after that, I uh, joined the FAA, where I spent 30 years as an air traffic controller, the last 20 in management and upper management. So what I bring from that is a thorough understanding of governmental regulations and implementation how these processes and policies are put in place and how they work, how to translate them to the community. Uh, at two of the airports, Rockford and DuPage, I was involved in upgrading the airport to international status. I was also part of the safety management team for Chicago O'Hare, where we work with entities everywhere from legal counsel all the way to the DOD, uh, trying to determine how these airspaces and runways would be used. Uh, additionally, I served as <clears throat> regional resource management specialist. I worked with the Office of Special Counsel, the OIG, the FAA, and the DOT in providing legal clerk services at that level uh, and studying uh, legal issues for them and presenting the information to the agency and the union. 
So through my career, I've presented a lot of technical information, had to boil it down to basic presentation for the public or several other people who are not familiar with the regulations or processes. And that's the unique ability that I bring to the RAB here um, because I've noticed in the last two meetings that there are two languages being spoken, the political language from the governmental side and the community concern. And trying to bring those together, sometimes it's difficult. And I think that the ability is here to do it, and I think I could facilitate that. I also have uh, FMCS training as a facilitator. That's Federal Mediation and Conciliation Services. I served as a facilitator for 15 years at both the regional and national level with the FAA. So that's my basic background. Uh, we have this huge natural resource here, one of the largest watersheds in the uh, state, and it's economically viable and without the treatment of the PFAS, it's going to present an issue and perhaps make this no longer economically viable. And people will not want to move here like they do right now. So that's what I bring. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. As I said, said I'll pass out ballots now to the community RAB members if you could fill these out and then Jesse will collect them and Mark and I will tally the results after the meeting. the process after this and the approving authority, but what criteria or purpose and roles that are in the RAB manual and rule that are key in the decision that the Air Force manager will review? So, so I don't have all those specific criteria, but one of the overarching objectives of the RABs in both the RAB handbook and in the uh, RAB rule, which is a code of federal, reg federal regulation that I outlines um, how RABs are chartered, set up, and, and implemented, um, is that the, the RABs need to be reflective of a good cross-section of the community. Uh, we want diversity and, as I said, represent representation of the full community not single groups, you know, not, not um, people's best friend, you know, as a group together, but a good representation of the community and the community's interests and concerns. So that's something we'll look at as part of the evaluation process. Our operating instructions say that the um, candidates submit applications, the RAB community members nominate uh, candidates for the position, and then the final approval of those is done by the uh, Brack Branch Chief in uh, AFCAC. <clears throat> yes, go ahead. Um, for the purpose or for the benefit of the, um, the nominees, I would request that the um, facilitator at some point this evening tally those uh, and uh, provide the results by the end of the meeting as opposed to after the meeting, please. You good with that? Okay, yeah, Mark and I will look at them uh, during the break and have those before the end of the meeting. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Kathy. That's a good idea. All right, so now I will quickly review the action items that we have had changes to since the last RAB meeting, and then when I'm finished going down the list, Mr. Willis will go over some additional details on a handful of AIs that are specified by the community as being something they'd like to hear more about. So since last RAB, we did, have not closed any of the AIs. We opened AIs number 107 through 120. So all of those are still active, as well as the ongoing AIs number 87, 88, 92, <clears throat> 96, 99, 100, 101, 104, 105, and 106. What I'd like to do is just run through the uh, action items that were identified by the community RAB members uh, for me to provide an update. I'm just going to provide a quick update. I would ask that we not um, spend a lot of time discussing 
in detail any of the action items. Mark and I have talked, and because of the material we need to cover in a normal RAB meeting and the number of action items, we're probably going to have a separate action item virtual meeting just to talk through those and give people on the RAB an opportunity to participate in that discussion before we take action and close them out. Um, so again, I'd ask that you, you know, limit comments tonight. I'll just provide an update and then we'll have a follow-up meeting to get into further details. So the first one is uh, action item 99. It says advise the RAB members of the Air if the Air Force is seeking to determine the source of PFAS, which is appearing in the wastewater treatment plant effluent. <clears throat> and so for that, that is part of the uh, RI scope, is to do sampling in the area of the wastewater treatment plant that is planned for later this year. Uh, we've talked about that in the session yesterday, and we've shown those sample locations on some of the posters at previous RAB meetings. So we do have additional soil sampling as well as uh, groundwater sampling and seep sampling in that area. <clears throat> the next one is action item 100. It's uh, advised the Oscoda Township personnel of the Air Force's plan to A, storm sewer usage, B, slip lining the main line that goes from the central treatment system plant to Van Etten Creek, C, is slip lining the Mission Street line discharging to consumer's ditch, and D, is paying for storm sewer usage. <clears throat> So the first one is uh, a storm, storm sewer usage fee, and the Air Force has agreed that we would pay a reasonable storm sewer fee. The, the limitation on that is the ordinance that has been written by the township is currently discriminatory towards the Air Force. We've identified that concern to the township, and my understanding is that they are evaluating that. Um, I, I understand that maybe everyone wasn't aware that all users weren't paying a discharge fee. <clears throat> so that is under evaluation by the township. Again, the Air Force has agreed that we would pay a reasonable fee, and so we're waiting for the ordinance to be changed. Yes? Can you expand on why it's discriminatory? You said not all, not it, all it, users pay? That's correct. So can you give me an example? Like, I mean, when you say not all users, like it, what yeah, users I mean, don't. it was writ written specifically so only the Air Force pays, no one else that uses the storm sewer pays. Who else uses the storm sewer to <clears throat> dispose of anything? Yeah. <clears throat> well, one answer to that is any business on the base that has a parking lot, because it's a parking lot, it yeah. brings water to Catch Basin and that goes into the storm. So that's just one example. Yeah, again, let's, let's try and limit the discussion on these action items or we'll never get finished with them or the rest of the agenda for the evening. These action items have been delayed uh, quite a bit in, in our past RABs and they do deserve some attention. I, I agree and I'd like to set up a separate forum to go through those. I think it warrants in a separate discussion dedicated to those. <clears throat> Uh, the B, B for that one was uh, slip lining the central, the, the storm sewer for the central, treat, central treatment plant discharge. Um, at this time, the Air Force is not aware of any problems with that line. Um, <clears throat> we are not going to preemptively slip line something that there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, we have indicated that, you know, we'll continue to work with the township if problems do occur in the future. Uh, that look like they're caused by our discharge from the treatment plant that we'll work with them to help reimburse for that or pay for that. Um, just so everyone understands, uh, the discharge from the central treatment system only uses about 10% of the capacity of that sewer line. So it's not like the Air Force is overloading it. <clears throat> There's considerable capacity available still. The C for that was slip lining the Mission Street um, sewer line. We are working with the township to do that. <clears throat> My understanding in uh, meeting with the township this week is that they have issued a request for bids um, to companies and are trying to get uh, bids for someone to come in and slip line that and fix the problems. Um, once they select a winning bid for that, 
They'll provide that, that to the Air Force. We'll enter into an, an ESCA, it's an Environmental Services Cooperative Agreement, whereby uh, they'll award the contract for the work, the work will be done, the bill will come in, they'll give it to the Air Force, and the Air Force will pay that bill. <clears throat> so we have agreed to, to pay for that. We've been working with them for, for several months now to get, get that in place and make it happen. And the last one appears to be redundant. I think the question may be based on the last RAB meeting, is the Air Force gonna reimburse the township for money they expended to expand the, um, the uh, drinking water system? And I spoke with the township uh, this week and at this point uh, there's been no discussion within the organization to pursue reimbursement from the Air Force uh, for that expansion of the drinking water system. <clears throat> Next is action item 101. It's provide a schedule for testing outflows for the mission and central, central treatment system um, for PFAS content. Address whether stormwater sewer samples are included in the UFP QAP for the PFAS RI. And yes, we do have a sampling plan for those areas. It will occur this year. It hasn't been done yet, but it, but it is part of the RI scope. <clears throat> Action item 104, uh, conduct additional IRAs at the DRMO, Defense Reutilization and Marketing Office, um, LF 3031, the Three Pipes Ditch, and the Wastewater Lagoon and Seepage Beds. Um, as, as Kathy indicated earlier, uh, Eagle did submit a request for those areas and the Air Force did provide a response back. So. We are, we are continuing to look at that. We have not said we are not gonna put IRAs. We have not said we are. We're continuing to evaluate that and, and we'll uh, work with Eagle as we move forward on that. <clears throat> Action item 105, determine whether the storm sewer outfalls were, la when the storm sewer outfalls were last sampled and whether they are routine routinely sampled in the future. This Action item was actually for uh, Eagle. Uh, Beth, have you got an update for us on this one? I, a rev, um, on this topic, but I got that answer from Water Resources Division, so I'm gonna ask that Charlie Bauer on the call answer this. Let me look that up. I have it in my uh, my email, and um, I will get get back with you on that. Okay, thank you, Charlie. Steve, you, you mentioned on the previous one that there is a plan in the RI for a sampling uh, of the storm sewers the outfalls, that you're yeah. working with. But it's not the remediation division. You're working with the water resources division. Is that correct? For that, it's part of the RI, and both agencies were were involved in review and comment on the on the uh, co-op. So, so, okay, so, so yes. 105. It should be known that that process with water resources division, there's no public input or RAB input involved in that process and I brought this up yesterday so it's I'd like to just amend this before and I'll give you some text later okay so. yeah go ahead Beth so Ernie are you the sampling is being done for the property owner um, for the storm sewer system and Air Force has been collaborating with the property owner in our water resources division to make that happen. Um, and then additionally, there were comments in the UFP QAP um, for storm sewer sampling. So are you, I, I wanna make sure I understand, I, I don't know that there'll be an opportunity for the public to weigh in on the sampling for the property owner's permit. Is that what you're asking? <laughs> Well, bas uh, basically, and this is the last thing I'll say, basically the Air Force with pretreatment to any outfall of any contaminant or anything into a storm sewer or 
a municipal sewer system is normally really regulated and the township has a draft ordinance to do that. So that's, that's where the Air Force and the, uh, the owner of the storm sewer uh, comes into play. And that's where the public comment and the RAB because it is contaminated water, although it's cleaner than so, it used to be. So let me just give a, a, a quick response just so you know where we're at. So on December uh, 10th, 2021, uh, we issued a compliance communication to uh, the Escoda Wurtsmith Airport Authority to conduct sampling at all discharge points from the site to service water and municipal storm sewer systems. Um, we approved a sampling plan on February 16th, 2022. Uh, five discharge points were identified uh, to be sampled. Three manholes on the east side of the airport, outfall number three associated with the central portion of the facility, and outfall number one associated with the western portion of the facility. Um, we've got the first round uh, of results and we're waiting a second round of results and a final report. So that's where we're at right now with this. Thank you for the update. Action item 106, uh, advise RAB members why the Air Force is not analyzing for total organic fluorine. <clears throat> So we've looked at this and we've talked about it and uh, total organic fluorine doesn't really help us determine the nature and extent of the plumes. Um, there are regulated values for uh, the five or six, six compounds that we've got um, in, in the quap right now and for, so we are using those values to delineate the contamination. As we implement, we go through the finish the RI, go through the FS and identify alternatives and design systems. We may go back and take another look at total, uh, total organic fluorine, but for, for the purposes of the RI for determining nature and extent, uh, we do not need that information. Action item 107, conduct soil profile sampling for PFAS at the former lagoon area associated with building 5001, the jet engine test cells. We talked about this one yesterday, and it will be in the handout, uh, an update on that, but we have collected one sample in that area, and we'll collect another one. Action item 108, the Air Force should characterize and evaluate the wastewater treatment plant sludge disposal trenches near LF 3031. Um, for their PFAS content and determine the results with Eagle and or discuss results with Eagle and the RAB. Uh, that's something that we're planning to do this field season as, as part of the RI. Action item 111, uh, sample individual extraction wells at LF 3031 for PFAS in addition to testing influent and effluent to determine which of these wells are extracting PFAS. That is something we are, we are looking at and planning to do. Action item 112, results that the Air Force, oh, requests that the Air Force add signage to the system buildings to more easily identify them to the public. Um, I've talked with our, with our management and as a general policy for the BRAC program, we don't label our buildings. Uh, we, don't like, we don't want to draw attention to Air Force facilities Air Force buildings on non-Air Force facilities just for security reasons. Um, so we don't have any plans to identify these buildings as, with anything other than a street address. Action item 113, provide the RAB with a scheduled de detailed work plan and or a technical meeting for the biota sampling associated with the uh, ecological risk assessment. And so, as I mentioned earlier, we did have that tech session on April 24th to discuss that. Action item 114, support, or suggest that Eagle split fish sampling with the Air Force so that samples can be processed in the same way that the state has been processing samples to compare their historical, histor <clears throat> excuse me, historically collected samples. I have talked with our risk assessors about that. And split sampling for soil samples or uh, 
water samples, groundwater, surface water, is easy to do. It's not so easy with a fish sample. Uh, for, the, for the fish, when they're collected, the individual organisms are removed and analyzed separately, and then the rest of the fish is ground up and analyzed. Um, they're looking for bioaccumulation of PFAS in the di different individual organisms, as well in the, as the overall tissue of the fish. Uh, so it, it's not really suitable for split sampling, but what we can do is um, we'll use, uh, I think the, the plan now is to use a shock, shock probe, electric probe to shock the fish. And so if we get multiple fish of the same species, we'll be happy to provide those for analysis by Eagle. So we will have two fish that will be analyzed from the same area at the same time. They won't be necessarily 100% correlation, but splitting the samples um, is just not going to be practical. In my understanding of the way the uh, state processed the fish in the past is they did not do the internal organs. It was the flesh of the fish. And if you're going to be putting that in a blender and homogenizing it for analysis, half of that slurry could go to the state. They don't need a large amount to do the analysis. Okay, we'll go back and look at it. Thank you, Mark. Action, <clears throat> excuse me, action item 114, uh, uh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, Beth with, e Beth Place with Eagle. Um, yeah, we would just want to make sure that we're documenting how we're gonna go about those, you know, conducting those samples so both agencies are on the same page that I'm checking in with our water resources division it, on, on the process and uh, perhaps documenting that in the QAP. Okay. Action item 115, provide the RAB with more information regarding the remedial investigation exposure assessment, including how, how we are targeting participants, the percentage of population participating and complete the project timeline. <clears throat> so th this was another topic that was discussed during the uh, 24 April um, risk assessment tech session. Uh, at this point, the Air Force is not planning a survey of, um, of the community for the risk assessment. <clears throat> Action item 119. Determine if the water at the small arms range that is used by the Iosco Sportsman's Club is safe to consume. I think I mentioned in the last meeting that a, a drinking water well was approved by the Air Force and put in about 2010. Um, at the time, they, they weren't aware of the PFAS concerns. They based the decision strictly on uh, the old legacy VOC plumes. Um, but we are going to go back as part of the RI and sample that well just to confirm that um, there isn't an impact, but all the data we have now indicates that there shouldn't be any concerns there, but we'll verify that. And the last one is action item 120. What steps can be taken for the risk assessments exclusion of PFAS foam testing to be reconsidered to include testing of the foam? <clears throat> <laughs> and so um, for, for foam testing, there is no approved method for that. Hang on a minute, let me make sure I've got my notes here. So there, there is no established uh, approved EPA method for um, foam analysis. The foam is a very intermittent occurrence, and so there is not a consistent exposure pathway that could be evaluated in either the human health or ecological risk assessment. And I guess that was it. So that's, that's the update on the action items. Again, uh, we can have a follow-up call and discuss these in greater detail. Uh, I'd like to plan on, on uh, calls to go through action items in the future. We've got about 25 open action items and I'd like to get that list whittled down to a, a very short list um, as we continue to move forward and then depending on what it looks like, we can either address them in RAB meetings or continue to have separate meetings. <clears throat> Go ahead, Dave. For any of these action items, can we, I mean, right now there's a, you have approximately, looks like about 20 action items. I see two of them that have due dates on them. 
Some of these are almost over a year old. Is there any way that we can put due dates on some of this stuff and not just leave them open? Because all of them say they're open, but there's no due date as to when they need to be completed. Can we put due dates on this stuff? Sure, we can work on that. I have another request. <clears throat> Um, so this action item list is something that we're, as RAB members, we're looking at. None of you see this, right? You don't have access to it, right? It's not online. I'd, I'd like to request that the, these action items be put on the uh, RAB website and that a version, you know, last, last modified or, you know, a date, the revised yeah, some kind date, of a date on it, yes, yeah. be included on these. Okay, thank you, Kathy. We'll do that. I think that completed our action item list, correct, Mr. Willis? Yes. Okay, perfect. So before we begin tonight's presentations, I would like to please remind all the RAB members that for the sake of time, please hold your questions until the end of each presentation. We will have time at the end to ask the presenter some questions, but please wait until the end. And we will begin with a Biko's update from Jim Hunt with WSP. Jim is joining us virtually tonight. Uh, so Jim, if you could please unmute your mic and address the rap. Okay, great. I'm uh, Jim Hunt, I'm with WSP. And I'm gonna actually give you a UXO brief. Uh, next slide, please. So why are we doing this? Uh, to inform personnel who are engaged in construction or other intrusive activities, uh, digging in the dirt, if you will, as well as stakeholders on or around the former Warsmith Air Force Base about restrictions and deep notices in effect and on adjacent and on or near the uh, former base required in decision documents that are issued by the Air Force and because of munition awareness training required by notices that have been placed on specified areas and they're officially recorded with the CAM. So that's why we're doing this today. Next slide, please. So there's uh, restricted areas here. Um, the ones in particular we're gonna pay attention to are highlighted, it looks like yellow on my screen or the top on the legend color there. That's where uh, known unexploded ordnance, uh, not that yellow, it's more like the gold yellow bar below that where the circle is, yep. All those areas that are in there. Those are known areas where they've found UXO and MEC in, in the, um, on the base here uh, for some time. I don't know how, how long ago they started collecting them, but we'll show you what they've uh, collected and what they are. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, typical restrictions here are groundwater restrictions, um, land use restrictions for industrial, use of land limited to those allowed under industrial uses as defined in the uh, Oscala, Oscala, I'm sorry, I must have let up, Township and OWAA zoning ordinance. No land use change allowed without prior written consent of the Air Force. Excavation restriction below 15 feet. That's what they call the smear zone. Health and safety plan for excavations above 15 feet. Contaminated soil management or soil management restriction or soil movement restriction, sorry. Uh, maintain soil cover, uh, excavation restriction where it's prohibited. Slab restrictions and munitions and explosives of concern otherwise known as MEC. There's a notice for that. Next slide, please. So the UXO MEC briefing objectives we're gonna go over today. Uh, we wanna learn identification features of MEC potentially encountered at Worsmith. Learn that not every bomb looks like a bomb. Understand that practice or training does not mean safe. And really what we want to enforce here is the three R's. Recognize when you may have encountered a munition and that munitions are dangerous. Retreat, do not approach, touch, move, or disturb it, but carefully leave the area. And report it, call 911 and advise the police of what you saw and where you saw it. 
and then how we're going to put this into practice. Next slide, please. So these are some of the uh, examples of uh, items, not from former or Smith, but items that may be found there. On the left, uh, we'll go left to right. There's a Mark II bomb, um, different size bombs there. Those are for training. The white with the blue color band on it is for training. Uh, we'll discuss why training things, although they seem safe, may not be if you're too close to them. There's a small practice bomb there at the bottom. There's a Mark 13 signal flare. Really doesn't look like any military ordinance, uh, but it is a military flare. There's a practice 40 millimeter projectile, the M781, and then a 20 millimeter projectile. Um, and if you look at the, the uh, last one we looked at and compare it to a pen, some of these are really small items, three or four inches. Um, they may be sitting on the ground, and this is a great example. It doesn't look like the nice pictures of it. So you need to be careful if you find something metal in the ground. And then the practice 40 millimeter grenade, you can see that looks like it's been laying around and it's probably been shot through. So it was on a, a range somewhere. Uh, it may be discolored like that. Um, if it has the uh, the base on it and it's a, a whole piece of ordnance, there could be a pro projectile uh, uh, charge in it. So be careful if you find it attached to the casing. Next slide, please. So what do you do? You retreat and you report. Don't disturb it. Uh, some of those items are actually able to hurt you. Uh, they're designed to be practice or training rounds, but they may contain a small spotter charge. Uh, the flare might have illumination in it or a smoke side in it. You'll call 911. This should put you in touch with the Oscata Township Police Department, OTPD. And describe what you found and where it is. Uh, the OTPD will notify the Air Force. And my understanding is maybe a year ago, someone found something out there and reported it, and it took a little bit of time. Uh, they were, according to the person we talked to earlier uh, today, they were very surprised that they found anything, which is probably great news for everybody that's out there on the, the old Air Force base, that it's rare that they find stuff. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, do not uh, pick them up. Um, don't put them in your vehicle. Sometimes bouncing them around will help set them off if it doesn't happen when you pick it up. Stick anything into them to see if they're empty or disturb them at all. Uh, what you're supposed to do is recognize that you found a piece of ordinance, retreat, and then report. Next slide, please. Uh, be alert for munitions during ground disturbing activities. So if you're going out there doing construction, um, if you're out there and they need to put a trench in for a water line, something along those lines, maybe plowing, digging, or trenching, uh, that's when you may unearth these items out of the ground. Uh, On-site explosive coordinates disposal support is required for some ground disturbing activities in the former weapons storage area. On our chart, it was next to the circle, so it was up in the on the, on that picture, the top portion of the picture there. So there are things there. Uh, if you're going to be doing construction, they're probably going to assign you a, either an EOD person or a UXO, unexploded ordnance uh, worker, to be out there to help you spot things um, that don't belong. And if the owner or user suspects ammunition, remember those three R's. Recognize it, retreat, and report. Next slide, please. Uh, I've got a, uh, when, you, when you get these um, slides, there's a link here. And uh, this, um, I guess it's a military site that's one put together, it has some great materials. So if you want to look at, into further these three R's, the Explosive Safety Education site is what I'm talking about. They have resources identified. You can print them off uh, in resources and information for kids and families, mm -hmm. military personnel, communities, and workers. 
Uh, you can see an example here of some of the kids' information. You see that recognize, retreat, and report. Uh, you see the, the dog with a sergeant collar and maybe a, a, uh, a young pup there. Maybe they're in Hawaii here. But they, they show that not every bomb looks like a bomb. If you see something called 911, they got bookmarks and posters and all kinds of great things you could print off for your community or for yourselves if you want to help educate anybody in your family, workers, anybody in the community. It's a great site to get resources from. Next slide, please. Okay, so for further information, you could contact CTI or WSP. The address is on the screen there, and the number you'll need to contact us at is 989-305-1100. I think that's the last slide, Amy, so it should be, uh, there may be one more after this, I'm not sure. Yes, that's my last slide, so if there's any questions, I'd be glad to take them now. Mike Munson from the Airport Authority. Um, we um, rehabbed Pride Rue Pride Road about two years ago, and uh, uh, this was a good review uh, because we went through that, uh, this whole packet or a similar packet. Uh, we needed to get explosive ordnance personnel up here uh, for the reconstruction of the road. So the airport um, staff is the same staff that we have now, that we had back then. They're basically well aware of the potential here. So again, thank you for this. Uh, but our, uh, our folks that would be doing any kind of um, maintenance, if you will, around the area is well aware of these potential dangers. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you, sir. Question also, please. Um, the upcoming MMRP work is the third time that this has been done at Wurtsmith uh, in my uh, tenure with the site. I was wondering if uh, you're planning on doing some geophysics such as magnetometry or EM to um, enhance your survey of uh, munitions? So he, he's actually not okay. Hello. Yeah, his, he's actually not involved with that project. Um, as, as, yeah, as, as we briefed at the last, last RAB meeting, um, yes, we are going to be doing geophysics on the site. Okay. So and the reason you say, you know, we've done this before, and you're actually right, for some of these sites, uh, military EOD units did come in in the past and do some cleanup of these sites. But the cleanup was not well documented. Um, there were no reports written. Um, they were done with handheld instruments only. There was no geophysics at the time, so there is no um, electronic record of any, in, any of the findings and that kind of thing. It was, it was very generic, very generalized. So because MMRP is being done under CERCLA as well, we need to go do a, a remedial investigation to either determine that it's all been cleaned up or if it has not been determined the extent of what may still be left out there that presents an explosive hazard um, and then go through the cleanup process. Um, back in, uh, let me guess, 2006, uh, the state of Michigan came in and did an EM and uh, magnetometry survey of the northern landfill area mm -hmm. and also the eastern end of the runway. Um, if the Air Force doesn't have that data already, I recommend that you get with the state and get that for additional uh, uh, documentation. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Anybody else have any additional questions before we move on? <clears throat> 